we have made our decision now on what we're going to do for the heating and cooling process. I'm going to get a couple things out of the way here, but lovely Wentworth wrench set. What is not metric and not SAE? It's Wentworth, and it has a W on it, and if you're not familiar with that, look it up. You may have ever wondered why your wrenches don't fit exactly on some of the bits on your British cars before a certain date. It's because they used Wentworth. Enough on that. Okay, so traditionally how this modification is done is you'll see the mechanical fan removed. You'll see the radiator put into this dead space here and the question is begged as to whether you can even get the belts off by how close the radiator is, which I don't like. I don't like that one little bit. However, if the radiator could fit in this position, we see that the hose distances are really happy and we see one other thing we see that the series three bulkhead would go right there on that line and we see that it appears i've got just enough wiggle to get this in front of it for the air conditioning which is what we want to do so what that means is power steering conversion we're going to go ahead pull out the mechanical so we're pulling the wings off now i've got spare power steering box and another one down here that are both right hand drive so it is just going to be what we're going to do. New radiator, intercooler will fit exactly in the tray neatly. And that is how we're starting off our morning is getting the wings out of the way so that I can dive after here and get all of the manual steering linkages out of my way. Get that to where I just have the end of the shaft and then I'll get going on prepping this side for the power steering conversion. Really, really an easy process. I even have the drag link. That's the right link out in my driveway. So uh, that's really the, the main transition on that project is you have to do an extended drag link. And then you have to either put a Defender uh, steering wheel in or you can modify that steering wheel to have a different um, <clears throat> count of splines for the power steering box. Uh, while we're at it, of course, we've also now come at our cold air. That's what I've got right here. Is, is this uh, right, right here is going to be cold? No, that's uh, hot air. That's, that's, like that's exhaust. Yes. So the turbo, obviously, I don't have a lot of room between that and the AC, so we're going to clock the turbo and work it in and play with all this wonderful amount of hardly any room, but we'll get it figured out. The wings are now off, and it was not the biggest beast of a job in the world, but it's just never super fun to get access to the upper two here when you've got the uh, <clears throat> mud flap or the um, splash guard piece of metal in. And uh, ours were in such bad shape, we just bent them out of the way and got these out, no problem. A few butt nuts, butts, blah, 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 nuts and bolts to deal with uh, in the <clears throat> stay for the uh, bulkhead. And then there's is some wiring uh, harness uh, connection to the wing, and then she comes right off. Um, give us a chance to see what we're up against here. This is actually mm, probably not good enough to, yeah, I'm kidding. So that's gonna go, and then we're gonna be ordering some footwells. Um, I'll be sanding this out, grinding this down, and seeing exactly where um, we've got. But I mean, what we're looking at here is the entire footwell is a giant hole. This is actually the panel on the inside that is the only thing you're seeing there. This is actually the exterior part of footwell is toast. So that will be getting redone. Um, the uppers look good, which is great. My sides look excellent, which is great. I've got some grinding and exposing to do here. And then we're good across the top. <clears throat> but I know we're not here to talk necessarily about condition, but I know you might be curious about these trucks. Um, if nothing else, now you get a look at <clears throat> how that looks. Okay, what we're gonna do, it's time to remove the uh, me mechanical steering. We have decided, because if you look at how nicely the hoses actually connect, and we're gonna have to do some customizing, but my hoses connect really, really nicely to the intercooler and the um, radiator based on um, everything staying in that tray, which I really, really like. So when we do that, <clears throat> it allows us plenty of room between the radiator and the <clears throat> engine to either do an electrical puller fan or mechanical. However, this sits so low that 
um, the mechanical is just really not going to get the kind of flow, especially since the um, shroud is not really an option. But we're going to go after the steering linkage now because we are going to do power steering change on this. It's actually a very simple process. I'll walk you through it. Uh, first thing we're going to do is get everything out of the way here, prime and paint, get everything, take a look, make sure there's no problems with the cross member. And then this is going to mount to the cross member, which will then allow me to get the front end of this truck to the profile that we want. We are going with the Series 3 look, which I'm really excited about. It means I'll be pulling off the Defender uh, rear panels that we did just for the hell of it. Uh, I had a morning free and I thought I was going to make this into basically a, a 90 um, hybrid, like a D90 slash Series 3 hybrid, which would make it look like a Stage 1. Uh, ultimately, I'm glad to be bringing this all the way back to its roots and making it look like a Series 3 with a concealed carry power plant, which is what I like to do. So I'm going to go up to the steering now, get it out of the way, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, so we've removed the two cross bolts right here that hold the assembly into the frame, and we've removed the clamp bolt here, and we're just prying this up, and it's actually freeing pretty nicely, not with one hand necessarily but I'm about to have that off and then I'll be able to take the assembly out and have this out of the way. Okay, well, we went ahead and pulled out the um, manual steering linkage and it pretty much just disintegrated uh, as we were working, believe it or not, delicately trying to get the piece out. It's just frozen in there. We get about a 16th of an inch of, of, of lift. It's basically a bushing and uh, you know how it is to fight those suckers. I'm sure if you've ever replaced the bushing on your series. So in our case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it that way for now, we've primed around it. And I'm on a timeline here. I have to get this truck able to be dressed and be able to put back in the driveway and look normal from the outside so that I can get it back in here to work on it in about a week. But uh, anyway, for now, that's what we're up against. So we're very pleased with the layout of the engine and the placement of the engine and where we're going to put the radiator and intercooler is right on top of the bulkhead uh, as the cross member excuse me as uh, we've mentioned already and uh, in doing that we've taken the steering linkage apart this for the worm drive will come out i'm going to study again tonight and remember exactly uh how that comes out because i know there's a worm gear in there and i want to make sure that i've got clearance to be able to get this but this is you know, currently loose i got all those bolts off and out um what will end up happening is when i get this back in the shop again we'll be putting a plate basically uh, about a six inch by six inch plate, if I remember correctly last time we did one of these, that will give us enough room to drill the four holes that we need for the power steering. We'll then buttress that and it'll be nice and strong. And the linkage that we lost here for the uh, drag link, I have a drag link that will come all the way back across. Uh, this one here will be abandoned. <clears throat> we'll get a longer one that will come out here and tie into the right hand drive power steering from a P38. I also have one from a 110. Um, I'll probably use the P38 on this uh, just in case I want to put the proper equipment on a 90 or a 110 that we might modify later. But this is a nice um, project for a P38. And that's not true. I'm sorry. I have two 110 steering boxes. So I'll be <laughs> putting that on here and going that route with it. But um, uh, we will go from there. Well, we're going to button everything up now. We're getting everything dry fit, or test fit rather, with just uh, you know a few bolts here and there to get the general location of where things are supposed to be. Um, my, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> my radiator bulkhead <clears throat> is toast, but I really don't want to cut into this um, and destroy the rest of this unit because the rest of it is in good shape. And I think that could be uh, repaired once we cleaned it up. So I'm going to set it aside, future project, and I'll just order the skin because that's all I'm going to need. I'm going to need the skin piece and its bolt setup, and we'll use the original um, hood stay. <clears throat> the hood latch assembly would put the hood latch right about here, which can be right into the radiator. So we're not going to do that. Um, what we're going to end up doing is they'll just be the um, hood catches and those work just fine. Uh, we've done this on several restorations where that's just how it ends up resolving the front end limitation on space. And because of where I want to put the radiator and keep it in its full assembly, etc., right behind the AC condenser right here, that's what we're going to do. Now, 
let's talk a little bit about <clears throat> something that I've gotten myself committed to and a mistake. Um, I, I talked about the fact that I had two 110 right-hand drive power steering boxes, and I do, and it completely eluded me, and I forgot that they mount on the inside of the frame, and that's just not gonna work because the radiator is gonna go right here. The P38 steering power steering box that you heard me mention is what I've done in the past. It sits on the outside of the frame. It does intrude in over the frame maybe two inches, but the front of the box is going to come to about here. The back of the box and the spline are going to come to about here. We actually will be cutting into the wing to accommodate that and make room for that, and that'll look fine. What I have to make sure I do when I set the radiator is leave myself enough wiggle room that where the P38's top of its box, which will be you know down in here, <clears throat> that I don't set the radiator all the way over. And I think we're going to be okay. I think we're going to be just barely, barely, barely perfect. Which, if there is such a definition of words, that's what I think we're going to be. Let me show you why I say that. <clears throat> I'm going to put this down for a minute. Apologies. I'm going to put the radiator in place to share with you all the way that I think we're going to make this work just fine. I'll pick the phone back up here in just a moment. Okay. So, radiator's in, air conditioning condenser is in, and I'm roughly square on the front, and I'm not overhanging this frame. I have to see what the wing is going to do because I believe it's going to line up perfectly with the way that this comes back exactly in line with the frame over here. And I'm off center, which if you'll notice here, I should have just enough room for the P38. And if I don't, I can shim the P38 power steering box slightly outward. And this will now all work. So you got to experience that with me <clears throat> kind of for the first time there as I put that in. But this is going to be our setup excuse the huge mess here and we're, we're very very close to the original proximity of the plumbing <clears throat> there we're going to remove the mechanical fan just to allow us to use these hoses and not foul them and also because the engine sets so much lower we just won't get any principle or any benefit out of that so we'll do a puller and we have the pusher and we're going to be doing great um what i've got to oopsies what I've obviously got to make sure is going to work here is the radiator's height. Now remember, it's sitting up on its um, studs right now, so I can get the radiator to drop about an inch, and that's going to fit really, really nicely. Once I get the wings test fit on, I'll put the hood on and see if I can close or, you know, lay the hood down with it like this for the rest of the week while I'm getting more parts in. But um, that's how our alignment's gonna be. So the radiator bulkhead skin will fit nicely here. We're keeping the Series 3 line, which I'm very excited about. I'm, I'm really glad to be bringing this back to its 1974 roots. That's my birth year, so pretty cool. We're gonna test fit the wing here, but I already know that we should be good here before this dives back and in. The air conditioning system, this hose will have to be custom made because that hose is the length to get us from here out to here, <laughs> where the defender or a 110 front end would have been. And so we're just gonna go ahead and take advantage of the drop pipe, <clears throat> get it connected, get it safely stowed for the rest of the week, up and mounted to the wing, figure out a nice home for that. Let's wrap up here talking about over here. You've heard me say a few times in this that you're gonna clock the torque as well. One other option that you can do, and notice, notice my bulkhead stay. If you look at my air conditioning preparation video in my playlist, <clears throat> You'll recall that I bent this out about maybe five degrees or so. And in doing that, I made room for the air conditioning. Let's imagine you don't have the air conditioning. And what's really cool about this is by bending this out, you're kind of done. Right? So if you just bent that out, 
that would fit great. You don't do any clocking and you're, you're setting yourself tapping and threading and some of the other options that are out there. We're gonna leave ours as it is. We're gonna push the air conditioning dashboard back in about an inch or two with some shims on the inside. And we're going to build a heat wall here. And then we'll decide if we like that idea or not. Try not to pay attention to that. This is definitely something that we're figuring out as we go here uh, in the engineering of this project. But our downpipe will work great. Um, we'll get down below the um, motor mount and then we will figure out how we're gonna go back. The clutch, of course, is on this side of the truck, which is different on a 110. And so where I would usually pass the exhaust right through there, I've got the clutch in the way. So we'll figure that out later on at the exhaust shop. But um, we'll clean this up a little bit. I know this is a little bit long, thanks for letting me ramble, but you're starting to see how it comes together. I'll do a couple of final photos here of when the wing's on and how everything that I've just described lines up.